Welcome to Cake Dragon Vids and another video on how Satan will come imitating the coming of Christ. You know, and uh, we're going to pick it up with uh, Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 13. To that subject will, will be, we'll continue the subject on Satan shall come or and uh, come up and fly as an eagle. But today we're going to be particularly be talking about where he will say there in Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 14. We say, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. You see, Satan is coming, imitating the coming of Christ. And make no no mistake, you know, uh, uh, today, of course, we're going to be talking about both the fifth trump and the sixth trump. Of course, the fifth trump is when Satan comes and his glorious coming or spurious coming, a fake coming, in which, like I, like in the videos we've been talking about uh, that, I've, that I've made exposing the depths of Satan uh, on uh, Satan shall come from heaven, right? Satan shall come in the clouds. Make no mistake, he's coming and maintaining the coming of Christ. This is I'm talking about the fifth trump here. And uh, of course, he'll come as a thief all of a sudden. He will come as lightning that shineth because he's uh, he disguised as an angel of light. And he will also have the, the, the graves will open when he comes. He's going to have a fake day of resurrection. And then he's going to come riding on a white horse, Revelation 6.2. He would always ha also have a rainbow, even as Jesus, Revelation 6.2. And of course, Satan will come wearing crowns along with his fallen angels. When they're coming, that's the fifth trump when they're coming. That, that fake, you know, that fake coming. You know, the fake glorious coming, I call it. And that's the fifth trump. And then Satan and his angels will come wearing crowns. And Satan will come wearing jewels or stones, and Satan will have chariots, and he will have a mighty earthquake, even as Jesus. And Satan will cast, will, Satan's kingdom will be cast to the earth, and Satan will come dressed as a shepherd, and he will come as a lion, you know, and all and with uh, with all his fallen angels with him. Okay, that's the fifth trump. So today we're going to talk about after he's kicked out. You know, not, not necessarily the fifth trump, but the sixth trump when he arrives. Okay? So we're going to pick it up with Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 13, uh, verse 12. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? Of course, the word, uh, the word Lucifer is Hebrew number 1966. Which comes from uh, Hebrew 1984 from its brightness, you know, because he's a shining one. He's the serpent, the shining one, Nakash. In other words, his original name, Nakash, the old serpent, um, uh, which means the morning star. Is he the morning star? Of course not. He calls himself the morning star, which is uh, Jesus. Jesus himself is the true morning star. Revelation 22:16. You know, and it says, son of the morning, right? It says, O Lucifer, son of the morning, morning here is dawn. Which is interesting because this connects you with Revelation chapter 16, verse 12. When uh, the river Euphrates will be dried up to make way for the kings of the east. Well, the, the word east there is G395 means dawn also, or morning. Which is telling you that those kings of the east are it's really Satan and his angels. And of course here in Isaiah it makes it very clear that that's what it is. In Isaiah 59 verse 19 where it says, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the ed, from the rising of the sun, that's the morning, that's the dawn, that's the east. When the enemy shall come like a flood. And who's the enemy? Satan will come like a flood. You know, in there, there we can see even Satan will come from the east. So even the graves of today are prepared to even face Satan when he comes from the east. So Satan will also come from the east, even as Jesus, uh, imitating every every aspect of the coming of Christ. Heart thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, son of the dawn. Heart thou cut down to the ground. The word ground, of course, as it is, means to the ground, mean mean the earth. That's when he is cast down. This is yet future because it says, Though that did is weaken the nations. You know, that is written in past tense. 
In other words, the setting of this verse is yet future. For Satan has not finished deceiving or weakening the nations. In Revelation chapter 13 and verse 8, that's when the whole world will wonder after the beast. When he comes as the Antichrist, he will fulfill or complete his role as the deceiver. 2 John 1 and 7. And here in Revelation chapter 12, 20, verse 3 and 8 and 10. Let me just read verse 10 in Revelation 20. And verse 10 says, And the devil that deceived them, see this is past tense. In other words, Isaiah 14 is talking about the future. Because he hasn't finished deceiving the world. But, but when the devil then the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And that's where we're at right here in Isaiah 14. In uh, verse 12, of course Satan hasn't been cast hasn't been cast down yet. You know, the Bible says there in John chapter 12, verse 31, Jesus talking to himself and says, Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. In the book of John chapter 14 and verse 30, Hereafter I speak to you, I'm not going to speak to you much, because the prince of this world cometh, and he has nothing in me. And of course, Job chapter 1 verse 6 and 7, it says that, And now there came a, a day when the sons of men came to present themselves to the Lord. Where? In heaven. What is Satan doing there? And the sons of God, of course, those are the angels. And Satan was among them. And what is he doing in heaven if he's already been cast out? Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against principalities, against rulers of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places or high places, right? What are they doing there? They, they have already been cast out. And of course 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 5 where it says, Whether there be gods in heaven, I mean, whether there be, you know, they call themselves God in heaven. Who calls themselves gods in heaven? I mean, the good angels call themselves gods? No, there's the fallen angels call themselves gods. Where? In heaven. Because they haven't been cast out. And of course, a millions of years ago, there was no nations to weaken or deceive. You know, maybe the cavemen. <laughs> but it's, uh, as a matter of fact, that's what I've got right here. Is, is a, a, co a copy of a T-Rex tooth from that first world age. You know, that's what we're talking about. That's, uh, that's what happened in the first world age. Uh, <laughs> T-Rex. That's a T-Rex tooth. <laughs> okay. It says there in, uh, uh, that, um, you know, he, he was, you know, in that first world age, he was sentenced to death, Ezekiel 28, but he wasn't cast down. You know, yeah, for the, the, the for judgment because of the prince of this world is judged, John 16, 11, right? But when he is cast down, he will come down, having great wrath, for he knoweth he has but what a short time. Five months, Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 12. And let's go to verse 13. It says, For thou hast said in thine heart, this is what he said, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my thrones above the stars of God, and I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation and the sides of the north. You know, of course, if this happened, while, like many say, this happened with, oh, this, this, this is what he did in heaven. He trying to sit in the seat of God in heaven. That's why they kicked him out. No, this is this is not the reason. This is the result of the result of him being kicked out. You know, if this happened when he was in heaven, I mean, before he was allegedly kicked out, why would he say, "I will ascend into heaven" if he was already in heaven? You know, <laughs> but when he is kicked out, when he is kicked out, of course, he ascends out of the bottomless pit. Revelation seventeen eight. And will come in the clouds. And of course, uh, this this is what caused them. Uh, I mean, this is not what caused him to be cast down, right? But as but this is the result of him being cast down. And uh, when he is cast down, he will sit in the temple of God, saying that he is God. And of course, God. Would you think God will allow him to sit in the temple of God in heaven? Of course not. God would never allow him to sit in the throne. In heaven, however, God will allow him to sit in the temple of God on earth, in Jerusalem, in the holy place. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse four, and Daniel chapter eleven, verse thirty-six and thirty-seven, as the abomination of, that makes desolate. Matthew twenty-four, verse fifteen, 
stating where he ought not, Mark chapter 13, verse 14, in the size of the north, which is Zion, according to the book of Psalms 48 and verse 2, as the wicked prince of Israel, Ezekiel 21 and 25, Revelation 13, 6, and uh, defiling the temple of God, Psalm 79, verse 1. And of course, it say, I will ascend, I will come up, you know, the word come up again, Allah. The word will be studying. I will ascend, you know, praise God, up the Allah. Again, there's that word. Of course, he will ascend up out of the bottomless pit, you know, and when he is cast down, you know, he's going to send the temple of God. He's going to be showing off his God, and he will ascend up, you know, uh, levitate to show off his power. Revelation 13, 11. Okay, verse 14. Again, I will ascend. There's that word Allah again. Uh, as in Revelation 13, 11, uh, uh, Jeremiah 4, 9, 22. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. And of course, He's going to try to be like the Most High. The word is the Supreme. In other words, He's going to try to be Jesus because Jesus is the one that says, Jesus says in Revelation 1 8, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the Almighty. Jesus is the Almighty. So it's telling you, documenting to you there, that He's going to call Himself Jesus, the name that is above all names. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, who opposes and exalts Himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped, so that He as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing Himself to be God. Of course, he was never sit in, in, the, in, in heaven, but he will sit in the throne in, on earth, right? In Ezekiel 28, verse 2, 6 and 9, of course, he calls himself God. He will call himself God. Ascend up, like in Revelation 13, 11, Micah chapter 2, verse 13, Revelation 13, 11, and Jeremiah 49, 22, verse 15. Yet those shall be brought down to hell. To the sides of the pit. That's where he will be cast down. As we're reading there Revelation 20. Also in Revelation chapter 19 and verse 20. And then it says there in verse 16. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee. And consider thee saying. Is this the man that made the earth to tremble. That this shake kingdom. Of course here we're talking about Lucifer. You know. And if you have an NIV Bible. You're not going to find the word Lucifer. And uh, to tell you the truth. It, here in this original 1901 American uh, Standard Edition, uh, uh, otherwise known, aka the American, the first American Standard Version, it don't have the name of Lucifer either. Neither does the New Living Translation or the ESV don't have the name of Lucifer. Uh, but here we're talking about Lucifer, and, 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 and God calls him a man. Oh, 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 oh man, I thought the Antichrist was. Uh, well, the Antichrist is the man. The Antichrist is Lucifer, Satan, the man of sin, the first one to sin in the first world age. Uh, of course, Satan is an angel. Revelation 9-11, he's the angel of the bottom's pit. Yet God calls him man. Of course, he's the anointed cherub that, that protecteth there in Ezekiel 28, verse 12 through 18. And of course, uh, you know, angels... We gotta acknowledge that angels were called man even before man was called man. Well, how is that, Pastor? Well, what does the word Gabriel, Archangel Gabriel, what does the word Gabriel mean in the Hebrew? It means mighty Giber, El, mean mighty man of God. So they were called man even before we were called man. That's why the Bible says, let's create man, Genesis 1 26 and 27. Let's create man in our image. The image of God and the angels, because we used to exist, so we were created, our, our flesh body was created in the image of our heavenly body when we were angels, okay? I learned that from Pastor Dennis that other day. <laughs> Pastor, God bless Pastor Dennis, right? And, uh, and verse, four, uh, verse 17 says, That made the whole world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house to his prisoners. You know, and Satan has many captives, as you read there in Luke 13, 8, uh, 13, 16. And verse 18 says, all the kings of the nations, all of them, verse 18 says, all the kings of the nations, all of them lie in glory, everyone is in his own house. 
But though, but though Satan, though Lucifer, are cast out of thy grave, thou sepulchre. In other words, he's a dead man walking. Like an abominable branch, he is the abomination of desolation. The abomination that make it desolate. Of course, abominable means to detest, to loathe. And, and look at this. And as, a raiment, and, and as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through the, with a sword, they go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden under feet. Carcass. Remember what Jesus said there in the book of a... And Matthew 24, 28, it says, Wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered. We'll be studying about the eagles. Satan will fly like an eagle. His angels will fly like an eagle. Satan is that carcass. That's where the eagles will be gathered. Praise God. And of course it says, trodden underfoot, and that's where he belongs. Romans 16, 20 that God will bruise Satan under our feet shortly. Just shortly means the five months, after the five months, okay? In Micah chapter 2, verse 13, he is the breaker. God will fall upon his head, right? And of course, uh, okay, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 4. Jeremiah chapter 4. Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse, five, verse 6 says, Set up thy standard. Standard is a flag, right? And of course, our flag should be Christianity or Jesus, right? The flags of love, flags of Jesus, flags of Christianity. Declare ye in Judah and publish in Jerusalem and say, well, I mean, verse, verse 6. Set up the standard, the flag, towards Zion. Retire. Retire in, 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 the, in the Hebrew is uz, to be strong. And of course, we have to be strong in the Lord and the power of His might, putting on the whole gospel armor to stand, not run away, not flee, not 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 be zapped out of here, but to stand against the against the wiles of the wicked one. It says, "Stand, stand, retire, stay not, don't, don't stand, for I will bring evil, and who's more evil than Satan, from the north? Ra is the word, bad or evil." From the north and a great destruction. Ultimately, the north, ultimately, is Satan and his angels. You know, Jeremiah 10, 22. Okay? Of course, um, the word, um, well, let's go to verse 7. It says, The lion is come up from the high thicket, and the destroyer, the lion, that means the false lion. You know, Satan is that false lion. You know, the true lion is Jesus, but the false lion is Satan. That's why it says there in 1 Peter 5, 8, Be sober, be vigilant, for the devil, our adversary, walketh, you know, he walketh around seeking whom to devour. He, uh, were, he as a lion, walketh around about seeking whom to devour. As a fake lion, because Jesus is the true lion. There in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 5, of course, right? And if you want to read more about the lion, you know, the fake lion, you read Jeremiah 4, 9, 19 through 22, Jeremiah 25, 32 through 38, Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 40 through 44, and Isaiah 5, 20 to 30. And it says, the lion is come up. There's that word again. Come up from where? From the thicket. From where he's from. He's going to arise. He's going to ascend out of the thicket, out of the grove. And, you know, Satan was a, you know, grove, you know, he was a tree, you know, he's called the Assyrian because he was a cedar there in the book of, uh, Deut uh, book of Ezekiel 31 and verse, verse uh, 4 through 10 through 9. And you can read about that there. And, uh, and not only that, or, yeah, of course, you know, he was so beautiful was he that all the trees in the garden of God even envied him because of his beauty. Satan, the most beautiful angel God ever created. You know, and when he comes, he's going to come as that beautiful angel. You know, and of course, he is known as the tree of knowledge of good and evil. There in Genesis chapter 2, verse 9. So it's no marvel that he comes out of his grove, you know, as a, as a, as a tree. 
Because where is he right now? I mean, where where is he booted out from? Where does he come out from? Well, the Bible says here in Revelation chapter 17 and verse 8 that he will ascend out of his, out of the bondless pit. You know, where the bondless pit is at? Well, of course, it's a place in hell. According to 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 4, you look up the word hell, Tartaro means the dip is the best of the inferno. You know, and where's the hell at? According to Luke 16, 19 through 23, it's on the other side of heaven. So if Satan comes from the boss pit, he's coming from the from, from the from your proportion that you're looking at it, he's coming from heaven. And imagine him coming with all his angels. So that's where he originally comes out of when he's kicked out, out of that grove. He, he's on his way. The destroyer of what? Of the Gentiles, it doesn't say there the Jews as Nebuchadnezzar, but as the Gentiles, it's talking about Satan the destroyer. Praise God. The sh Shahath to decay, to ruin, the son of perdition, in other words. As in Revelation 9 11, Apollyon, the destroyer, that is to say Satan. Uh, G623 in the Strongs, right? And of course, he was gonna he's gonna take the world, Revelation 13:8. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 8. It says, The destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. He's coming. He's going to be kicked out. He's gone forth from this place, from that limited axis. You know, his place will be taken away. Revelation chapter 12, verse 8. And he will be booted out by Michael himself, the restrainer. Uh, Daniel chapter 10, verse 21 and 22. To make thy land, thy land, what? The earth. And it's desolate. He's going to make the earth desolate. And the city shall be laid waste without inhabitant. Okay? And look at verse 8. For this gird you with sackcloth, lament, you know, and howl. For the fierce anger of the Lord is turned back from us. Lament as the only son. There Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 26. Where the destroyer will come upon, upon them suddenly and they will lament like if they lost their first begotten son. Why? Because they will lose the first begotten son, Jesus. In other words, they traded off Jesus for a lie. Traded off the Messiah for the false Messiah. Amos chapter 8 verse 10. Zechariah chapter 12 verse 10. Matthew 24 verse 30 says, Every eye shall see him. And they're going to lament. You know, in Revelation 1, 7. Behold, Jesus comes in the clouds. You know, and everybody's going to, I mean, they all, they, even them that pierced them shall see him. They will lament. You know, praise God. And of course, how? Reminding you of the big bad wolf because he's the one coming. And uh, verse 9 says, And it shall come to pass that at that day, says the Lord, that the heart of the king shall perish, and the heart of the princes and the priests shall be astonished, and the people shall, and the prophets, I mean, shall wonder. The word, pro, the word uh, wonder there is tama, which means to be in consternation. Failings of anxiety or dismay typically at something unexpected. In other words, they were expecting good. You know, it, it, G, Satan will come upon them as a thief. The destroyer will come unto them suddenly, Jeremiah 6, 26. They didn't expect it. As it is written there in Amos chapter 5 and verse 18. Where it says that, Woe unto them that desire the day of the Lord. But it's not going to be a day for you. It's going to be a day of darkness, a day of gloominess. In other words, they're respecting Jesus, but it's really going to be Satan. And it says there in Micah 1, 12, that they, they carefully waited for good, but evil came down, descended down, literally. Right? Praise God in Of course, they, when they see that they were worshiping the false Messiah, you know, these false prophets, and they're going to look at each other and they're going to desire the mountains to fall upon them. Isaiah 22, chapter, two, two, chapter 19 through 22. Luke chapter 23, verse 30 and 31. Revelation chapter 6, verse 15 and 16. And verse 10, this says, I, our Lord God, surely thou hast dis greatly deceived this people, this people in Jerusalem, saying, You shall have peace, whereas the sword reaches unto the soul. You know, the word deceive is nasha, means to me mentally to delude or morally to seduce. 
God shall strengthen them, send them a spirit of strong delusion to believe a lie. Why? Because they not had, they did not receive the little truth. They would rather hear uh, fly away doctrine, the traditions of men, rather than God's word. The Bible says there that God will send a spirit of strong delusion. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse ten through twelve. A deep, a, a spirit of deep sleep of slumber. Book of Isaiah chapter twenty-nine, verse ten. And they will surely drink, Jeremiah 25, verse 28. You know, and they shall cry, peace, 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 but there shall be no peace, Jeremiah 8, 11, Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 14, and Ezekiel 13, verse 10. And there shall be no peace until the true prince of prince, princes uh, is, uh, uh, shows up, right? Isaiah 9, 6, Jesus is the true one, and until then, there won't be any peace. Say, well, destroy by peace. He's going to come saying he is the Prince of Peace, Daniel 8, 25. But when they cry for peace and safety, in other words, when Satan is here, they're going to believe it's Jesus. They're going to say, oh, peace and safety. But then sudden destruction will come upon them as a woodman in travail, and they shall not escape. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. And verse 11 says, At that time it shall be said, this people to Jerusalem, a dry wind. Look, look at the word dry here. The word dry is, is a sock, which means dazzling, which means bright. In other words, a bright wind, the bright like Satan is bright. Where it says there in a, a course he's a, that uh, uh, he comes as an angel of light. You know, his first, second Corinthians, he disguises himself as an angel of light. Second Corinthians 11, 14 and 15. Marvel not for Satan himself disguised as an angel of light. And also there in Ezekiel 28, verse 17, Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. You see, he's the shining one, Nakash. That, that's his name, the shining one, the serpent. You know, praise God. And, uh, and the word when is ruach, which means breath, like uh, spirit. In other words, documenting to you that there in uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, where it says we're going to be caught up in the air, it's not atmosphere, it's breath. And the word breath is spirit. In other words, we're going to be trans transformed into the spirit body, not into the atmosphere. Look it up, the word air. I believe it's G109. I'm not sure, but I think it's G109. I'm, it says right there. Okay. I <laughs> got digressed a little bit there. But uh, let's get back in track here. Okay. Now, of course, air, uh, it symbolizes winds of doctrine. You know, Ephesians 4, 14. And it says... And there's a greatly at that time this this people I mean at that time shall it be said to this people to Jerusalem a dry wind on the high places in the wilderness toward the daughter of my people not to fan nor to cleanse it's not to brighten it's for darkness because it's the prince of darkness you know the word there uh, not to not to dry I mean not to brighten in the Hebrew okay and uh, verse twelve it says. Even a full wind means max, a max to the max. You know, when the transgressor come to full, to max. A full wind. It says, from those places shall come unto me, now also will I give sentence against them. You know, they are saying they're going to be sentenced. Verse, look at verse 13. It says, behold, he, who said this he? The destroyer, Satan. You know, verse 7 shall come up, it says there come up, ascend up, Allah, like in Revelation 13, 11, where uh, the first, the second, the, the, the second beast will rise up out of the earth, the same thing, Allah will rise up, it says, and come up as clouds, you know, and when he ascends up out of the, out of the bondage pit, you know, he will come. He, the, the Bible says there in Revelation 9, 2, Joel chapter 2, verse 2, that smoke will come out and it's going to look like clouds. You know, but those are fake clouds. These are smoke clouds. I mean, it's going to be Satan and his locust army. It's not going to be Jesus. When Jesus comes in his cloud, it's going to be Satan coming in his clouds and his, and his puff of smoke. He shall come up as clouds in his chariots, a.k.a. his Flying vehicles, high-tech flying vehicles, UFOs in other words, shall be as a whirlwind. His horses are swifter than eagles. There it is. Satan, who are these eagles? Satan and his angels. And they are, 
they are supernatural horses. They're supernatural because they're faster than eagles. Horses are not fly faster than eagles. You know, eagles can move up to 100 miles per hour when they when they dart. You know, there's God. Fly as an eagle. Jeremiah 48, 40. Jeremiah 49, 22. Matthew 24 and 28. Those are these. Wherever the wherever the carcass is, there will be the eagles gathered. Okay? Let's go to Habakkuk, chapter 1. Please. From a far country, Isaiah 13, 5. In other words, from the end of heaven. From a remote, far space. Outer space, in other words. From heaven. From far. They shall fly as the eagle. Who are these eagles? Satan. So look, if you if you want to listen to uh, the Alexandrian text, where it says there in uh, Revelation 8.13 that there's going to, uh, uh, an eagle will be flying, well, <laughs> uh, that's not what it says. It says angel. That's the proper translation, angel, okay? Not eagle. Uh, you're going you're gonna to be expecting eagles. Uh, those are the eagles that are going to fly like eagles. Satan and his army, Satan and his angels shall fly as the eagles that hastens to eat. They're going to fly like eagles. Horsemen fly as eagles. Jeremiah 48, 40. Jeremiah 4, 9, 22. Jeremiah 4, 13. Habakkuk 1, 8. Lamentations 4, 19. And it says there, They shall come up all for violence. The word violence there is the word Hamas. Like the terror group Hamas, right? Like Spanish uh, terror or, or Hamas, like in Spanish or the terror group. Violence. Bambication wrong by metonym unjust gain. Like Satan there in Ezekiel 28 verse 16 where it said, By thy multitude of thy merchandise, they had filled the midst of thee with violence. And their, and thou hast sinned, right? Where's God? Okay, their horses also are swifter than they, oh, wait, wait a minute. They shall come up for violence. That a Hama, uh, the word, of course, Hamas. And it says, they show up, up as eagle as 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 the east wind. Of course, the east means the four front part. Hence, the east. And although telling you, documenting you that they're gonna come from the Satan's gonna come from the east like Jesus. But not only that, documenting that the kings of the east are actually Satan and his angels. Ultimately, you know, yes. Past, uh, Donald Trump is doing a lot with the kings of the east right now, but still, you know, the ultimate kings of the east is Satan and his angels. That's really that what they're they're paving the way for. Why? By making peace on earth. You know, uh, the kings of the earth initiating this one world system, which will receive a fatal wound, and Satan will come, and with all his with his fake with his fake uh, coming. And replace kings of the earth with his kings, okay? And it says there, and it says, and wind, and it shall sup up as the east, the east wind, you know, that dry wind, and they shall gather the captivity as the sand. Remember, the sand represents the sand, the sons of God. He's going to take many captives, okay? Isaiah 5 20, because they didn't study God's word. Uh, Revelation 13 8 through 10, Isaiah 43, 43 11. Verse 10, And they shall scoff at the kings, and the princes shall be a scorn unto them. In other words, they're going to make fun, ridicule. Why? Because they're going to come replacing kings of the earth with it, with their kings. They're going to scoff at them. Kings and princes shall be a scorn unto them. Satan will come replacing kings of the earth with his kings. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 12. Daniel 11 verse 4. Daniel 7, 8, 17 and 20. They shall deride every stronghold. There's that word stronghold again. For they shall heap dust and take it, clay, and take it. Then shall his mind change and shall pass over and offend imputing his power unto his good. There's that word Passover, Micah 2.13, where it says that Satan is the breaker, the one that will pass over. But I always remember that Jesus will pass over his head. Praise God. Okay. You know, when we are delivered up, Revelation 2.10, Luke 12, 11 and 12, Mark 13, 11, Matthew 10, verse 19 and 20, we're not to premeditate what we shall say, for the Holy Spirit will speak through us. John, uh, Luke 21, verse 14 and 15. These tidings, uh, uh, these tidings, 
that will come out of us. Acts chapter 2, verse 63 and 20, Daniel 11, verse 44, will anger Satan. And he will then do that which was not permitted him to do, which was Psalm 105, verse 15, which we touch my anointing and do my prophets no harm. And he will kill the two witnesses, Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 10. But of course, God will pass over him. Micah, right? Micah 2 13. You know, and it says here, and, and offend, imputing his power unto his God. The word power here is interesting because is the word koah, which comes in, in, you find that in Daniel several times, Daniel 11 6 and Daniel 11 25. Means to be firm, literally, you know. But it also means a large lizard, like a dragon. Wow, you know, and unto his God, the saint have gods. Well, he has many gods. You know, all his angels are called gods. You know, they they worship as gods. First Corinthians eight five, Deuteronomy thirty two seventeen. Okay, and verse twelve says, "Art thou not from everlasting, O Lord, my God, my holy one? We shall not die, O Lord." Thou hast ordained them for judgment. Who are these that are ordained for judgment? Who are, who are these that are already ordained for judgment? Satan and his angels. You know, the, Satan, the, the Antichrist cannot be some, some man here on earth. It has to be Satan and, his, and Satan and his angels are the ones that are coming, okay? Praise God. Este, um, let's go right quick and uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, finish this study. And uh, we're going to go to the book of uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 46 and verse 6. I guess this video is going to be longer than what I thought, but that's all good. As long as you're you're here, you know, <laughs> stay, stay, stick around. So let, verse 6, let not, let not the swift flee away, nor the mighty man. There's that Giber, uh, uh, Giber. escape. They shall stumble and fall toward the north by the river Euphrates. You're connecting it again to the river Euphrates. When it's dried up, the kings of the the kings of the east, meaning Satan and his angels, the dawn, the son of the morning, Satan. Who is who is that that cometh up? And there it is, Allah. Who is this that ascendeth up, that rises up? Revelation thirteen eleven, as a flood. There's that flood of lies. Revelation twelve fifteen. Whose waters are moved as the rivers, Isaiah 28, verse 2. An entity, a bad entity, as a flood, you know, as a storm, a flood, that's Satan. Egypt rises up like a flood, you know, remember, and in times, Jerusalem will be called Sodom and Egypt, uh, Revelation chapter 11. And it says, rise up like a flood, and his waters are moved like rivers, and said, I will go up, I will go up, there he is again, I will what? Ascend up. Allah again, rise up, ascend up, and will cover the what? The earth. In other words, when Satan rises up there in Revelation 13, 11, it's symbolic of his flood of lies that will rise up and cover the whole earth. It is. It says, I will cover the earth. I will destroy the city and the inhabitants thereof. Verse 9 says, come up. Now he's telling his angels to come up. Maybe that's where it comes up with the, with his, come up here, the, like the false rapture. You know, I'll, just, I'll get you all out of here, you know. Um, I came to rapture you away, so come up. Fake rapture. You horses and rage, you chariots, let the mighty men come forth. You, the Utopians and the Libyans that handle the chill, the Lydians that handle the bend and the bow. For this is verse 10, for this is the day of the Lord God of hosts, a day of vengeance, that it may avenge him of his adversary, Satan and his angels. The sword shall devour, it shall be satiate, satiate, satiate oh man, I can't say that word, satiate, and made drunk with their blood. For the Lord God of hosts has a sacrifice in the north country, that Satan and his angels, by the river Euphrates, Revelation chapter 16 and verse 12. The kings of the east, okay. Okay, let's finish up with Daniel 11, okay? Let's go back to Daniel 11. And by the way, this is my favorite chapter in, in, uh, in the Old Testament, Daniel 11. <laughs> At one time I was, man, real, real into Daniel 11. I even wrote a book about it. And I still need to, you know, uh, finish up those videos that I was alone uploading in Daniel 11. Daniel 11, okay? 
And, uh, you know, let's go ahead and start with uh, verse 16. It says, But he that cometh against him shall do according to his own will. Here we see the he goat. And Daniel 8, where he does according to his will, and no man is able to stand up against him. It represents the end time superpower that comes from the west of the face of the whole earth, meaning the western hemisphere. What superpower comes from the west of the whole earth? From the western hemisphere. And of course, the, the notable horn represents its king or its president. Okay? But he shall come against him, shall do according to his own will. That's, that's the king of the he goat. And none shall stand before him. In other words, he's a superpower. And he shall stand in the glorious land, which by his hand shall be consumed. In other words, uh, ever, ever since uh, Jimmy Carter, 1979, which you can cover in, in verse 10 and 11, you know, when they uh, actually installed, uh, you know, the uh, the Iraqi, you know, in Amin or in Afghanistan, and, you know, and uh, you know, what happened in Iran and all this stuff, you know, the Council of Foreign Affairs, you know, they had a lot to do with that. But that's a different subject. I mean, that's a, that's for some, some other time, right? You know, uh, you know, when Jimmy Carter started, this, he was the first king of the he goat or the first notable horn, and he started the, the you know, these peace accords with the, uh, with Israel and Egypt, remember, uh, President uh, President Anwar Anwar Sadat, and of course he was assassinated for that in 1980 and uh, 79 and 1980, right? So Pre President Carter was the first one, you know, to to try to bring this peace in Jerusalem, and ever since then, you know, according to George and now George Bush, uh, all the way to George Bush, you know, and we have Jimmy Carter's one. And then after that, Reagan, right? And then in Reagan, we have a uh, the the, fir the first Bush, right? And then after Bush, we have Clinton, and then we have George W. Bush, and of course George W. Bush, you know, he's the one that brought this uh, roadmap to peace, which here in verse 17 says, "He also shall set his face to enter with the strength of his whole kingdom and upright ones with him." The word upright ones there means a plan that is equitable between two parties. By the he go to strengthen security and bring an anti-terrorism plan. You know, in 2003, George Bush came up with a, with a, with that a roadmap to peace, bringing a two-state solution. And ever since then, everybody's been seeking that two-state solution. And he shall give him the daughter of a woman, corrupting her. And of course, what he do in Iraq? He installed the so-called democracy. And instead, you know, instead of voting for people that are for America, they, they vote for people that are against America. Uh, you know, the terrorists, like they're in, uh, in Afghanistan, you know. <laughs> and even in, Pal in Palestine, you know, Hamas, Hezbollah, uh, Muslim Brotherhood, you know, all the... <laughs> So democracy is not really working for us because the word here, woman, or daughter of a woman, you know, when in prophecy, daughter of a woman, a woman represents a church, a religion, or a political religion. And here in this case, represents a political religion, democracy. You know, coming from the west of the face of the whole world, spreading democracy, so-called, but she shall not stand on their side, neither before him. They, they, that democracy is not working for us because it's it's. it's bringing more anti-Americanism, terrorism, you know, and verse 18 says, After this shall he turn his face unto the owls. Owl, think of owls as, as in the Hebrew word, which means the desires dry lands. In other words, deserts, you know, they have oil. Iran, Iraq, you know, <laughs> and he shall take many, but a prince, you know, we see here, and this is supposition, okay, you don't have to accept this, you can look at it some other way. There are many ways to look at Daniel, okay? But supposition, uh, uh, you know, putting some supposition, you know, the prince for his own behalf, you know, uh, George Bush, you know, he, he was pretty popular for a little bit, but when he started getting into Iraq, you know, Afghanistan, he started, you know, his popularity started going down, and there was this senator, uh, Senator Obama, <laughs> which uh, he said that he was going to bring the truth out and bring the truth back, you know, and uh, of course... Uh, that played very well for him. As a matter of fact, he won the presidency. It says, For a reproach offered by him, in other words, a withdrawal, to seize, 
without his own reproach, he shall cause it to turn upon him. Then shall he turn his face toward the fort of his own land, but he shall stumble and fall and not be found. You know, for a while George W. Bush was out of the picture. You know, verse 20. Then shall stand up in his estate, you know, after George Bush came who? President Obama. What did he do? What is he famous for? Obamacare, the highest raiser of taxes ever. Even the, if you want to look at it in a world sense, if you, the, the carbon tax, the world carbon tax, you know, in the glory of his kingdom. But within a few days, he shall be destroyed. Shabbat, the word Shabbat it means to burst. In other words, his term terminated. His tenure, his term went to his fullness. It bursted. That's what the word Shabbat means. It, it bursted. It just went out. Neither in anger nor in battle. Why? Because his term was out. And verse 21, who came after Obama? Well, the, we have the fifth, the fifth, the fifth he go. It says George Bush, or the fifth notable horn of the he go, George Bush. The sixth was Obama. The seventh is Trump. The seventh is Trump. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person. And what was President Trump famous for? For being vulgar, vile, you know. But the word vile is interesting because it means rejected in the Hebrew. And of course, when George, when President President Trump took office, oh man, there was a million million man march uh, saying he's not our president. Even today, they're trying to not giving him the honor of the kingdom, trying to uh, impeach him and find you know collusion with Russia and all this stuff. You know, it's a, it's part of this verse being fulfilled. To whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, and they're not going to. They don't want him to be president. From the, from the right and from the left, or the so-called right, so-called left, they're, they're all in the same party, okay? They all work for the Illuminati, the Canaanites, okay? But he, but look at the, the colon. The colon means we're going to enter a, a, you know, after the colon, of course, is the gap theory. But he, that Satan, shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries and other... Satan will replace the kingdom of the he goat. In other words, Satan is the ultimate he goat, the ultimate notable horn. Okay? He will replace kings of the earth with his king, and he's going to replace one of them, which is the, the role of the most powerful man on earth. He will also take that role because, well, if Jesus is here, of course he's the most powerful on earth. <laughs> okay, verse 22. And with the arms of the flood. The flood of lies, Satan, shall they be overthrown from before him and shall be broken. In other words, the breaker, Satan, the breaker, Micah 2.13, shall broken Shabbat, in other words, burst. You know, that flood is going to burst. Yeah, also the prince of the covenant. Do you hear the prince of the covenant? It's not the Antichrist. The prince of the covenant is a king on earth which, which tries to bring this peace treaty. More than likely, the notable horn, you know, this notable, this Prince of the Covenant is the one that starts or commences this this, this pre peace treaty that will receive a fatal wound. It will be healed by Satan when he arrives, by replacing kings of the earth with his kings. Okay? Now it's saying the Prince of the Covenant, the one that makes peace, is not initially Satan. It's a prince on this earth. And he's a real good negotiator, trying to negotiate peace. In other words, that's his ultimate plan. That's his ultimate negotiation. His ultimate goal is to bring about this peace. And he has to be a good negotiator. But he's not Satan. They're going to think he's Satan when he brings about this peace. He's the anti antichrist, okay? Oh, praise God. It tells you right there, verse 23, And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully. In other words, telling Satan... Will, will, will make a league with the Prince of the Covenant telling you that the Antichrist and the Prince of the Covenant are not the same. Okay, the Prince of the Covenant is the king on the earth that starts this peace, receives a fatal wound, Satan in the middle of the tribulation comes and heals that wound, you know, by replacing kings of the earth with his kings. And verse, and this is, for he shall come up. Who's going to come up? Satan. Allah, again, that word come up, arise. Ascend up, like in Revelation 13, 11, and shall become strong with the small people. Of course, the small people is the goyim. Of course, he be, with the Canaanites, of course he becomes famous with them because he's their father. That's who they've been expecting. 
That's what they've been prophesying, even in the back of the dollar bill, with the all and I. Okay, that, that'll be it for today. Thank you, and God bless, and keep on kicking dragon. Okay, God bless.